A Lightwave artist on the New Tech forums was looking for a way to animate a hose that would be connected to uh, an object on each end and each object could move uh, and the hose would animate but it wouldn't collide it would actually collide with the ground and not cut through the ground so I thought we could take a look at how we could go about doing that let's go ahead and hop over to modeler and I'm just going to not knowing what the objects uh, he was looking to use I'm just going to use two boxes okay so a box on either end okay and we want a hose in between here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up, and actually let's give just a little more room between these. So I'm just going to move these. Okay, Just selecting and then T for move. Okay, let's put a hose in between, but let's do a low res version and a high res version. So I'm going to grab uh, the box tool and I'm going to make a flat object with a lot of segments. Okay, let's say something like that grab these points on the end and hit delete. So what we pretty much created was a row of two point polys. Uh, you can't get much lower than that as far as a low res object. Okay, so here's our objects. This is gonna represent our hose. We'll come back and make the high res object um, here in a, in a second, but let's go ahead and work with this. Um, before we do, I'm going to select some of the geometry. Let's move this box out just a little bit more. I saw that there's an extra, extra point in there we'll take advantage of. Okay, and same thing with here. Try not to be too picky about this. Okay, so now what we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a selection set that we can take advantage of with dynamics. So I'm gonna select the points that make up the box and the end of the the two point poly chain over here, and the same thing over here. Okay, come down here to S for selection set, new, and I'm gonna call this fix. Okay. And now we've got those points as, as part of that. I'm going to hit S for save, and let's call this hose uh, box 001, save. Let's shoot it over to layout, okay? And let's go to perspective. Okay, I'm going to switch over to um, texture wire just so that we can see the objects a little better. Those two-point polys wouldn't have shown up all that well in OpenGL. They'd be the color, uh, the, the surface color, which in this case was gray. And gray on gray, hard to see. So I'm going to move the light out of the way. Okay. And let's go ahead and set this up. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and put a ground object in because we know we need that. So I'm going to come over to items, add dynamic object, collision. Let's call this ground and hit OK. And we're going to change it from sphere to plane, and let's drop it to the origin by having a, a zero for the, the level. Okay, so we now have our ground, and now let's go ahead and set up this object right here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, not have it animate at first, just so we can see the, the setup. So P for properties, dynamics tab, add dynamic, let's add cloth, double click. And for fix, let's choose the point set, that selection set we created called fix. We'll select that. Okay. And let's come over to collision. Yep, we know we want to have it collide. So collision detect all. We'll come over to uh, the etc. tab. Let's give it some gravity, negative 9.8. And then we'll just throw a preset on there. Um, let's choose cut and thick. But that's just a starting point. It'll just throw some of the values in there. We can change it if we don't like the, the setup there. Okay, with that set up, let's go ahead and see what, uh, what that's going to give us when we calculate. Okay, so I'm going to just scrub the timeline. You can see that the boxes aren't being affected. It's just because we fixed those over here with fix. And the two-point poly chain is being affected, but you can see that it's holding on here and, of course, on the other side. Okay, but we talked about having it animate. Okay, so let's, um, let's say that, that these boxes are going to animate um, and the hose is going to, to change over time. So, uh, you know, depending on where these boxes are. So to animate those, let's throw some bones in there. I'm going to come over to the top view. Okay, let's go to wireframe. And I'm going to throw some bones in. So setup tab, and let's choose draw bones. And I'm just going to draw a bone here doesn't have to be this big it's just so that we can see it and then I'm going to draw a bone here okay 
And for, uh, let's go to the properties panel. And for the fall off type, I'm just going to crank that up to 128, just, just so that um, we kind of stay in a, a certain range. Um, go to perspective and let's turn the bones on, bones on. I'm going to grab uh, this bone. Now, it's not going to move the box at first because we already have dynamics applied to it. Uh, actually, let me show you that just so you can see. So I'm going to come over to frame, say, 20. and I'm going to set a keyframe, uh, knowing that I want to give some time for this to collide up against the ground. Then I'm going to come over to frame 30, and I'm going to move up. Notice the box isn't going with it. Okay, hmm, what can we do? Let's click on this object. P for properties, dynamics, let's turn cloth effects off just for right now. Okay, it's not going to give us the exact look we want uh, with the hose just yet, but it will once we uh, once we calculate it. So I'll come back over to um, to the bone. Okay, and on frame say 35, I'll come over here. On frame 40, let's um, let's have it rotate some, and then on frame 45, we'll have it rotate this way a little bit. Okay, and maybe. Uh, let me grab that bank and let's have it pull down a little bit. Okay, so this is going to be our, our basic little animation. Okay, so now that I have this, I'm going to go and turn dynamics back on. But before we do, just have a look. These two bones without dynamics, you could be animating that hose. But if you want it to, to really sag and hit the ground and, and look like a real hose that can drape, well, then dynamics is, uh, is not a bad option. So let's go back to the object, P for properties. Let's turn cloth uh, dynamics back on and calculate. Okay, so kind of a little spasm at the end with that rotation, but that's okay because it's the, the hose is working. Let me close this down. We can see that the hose is attached no matter how I rotate this, and it is colliding with the, the ground. Let's give it um, 90 frames to play with, okay, just so it can sag at the end. Now, I could go back to the dynamics uh, panel and hit calculate, or I could just come over to modify and use IKB calculate. It works the same way, same calculation. Okay, so there we go. That's looking pretty cool. Why don't we go ahead and um, use a high-res hose so that we can really see what's going on. I'm going to go back to, to texture shaded uh, wireframe. And let's go back to Modeler. And I'm going to copy over these boxes. Copy to layer 2. Paste. Okay. And um, down the middle here, box. Fortunately, we already have those segments. Not a bad little setup there since we already did that and we'll just give it a little bit of shape here okay I'm gonna go ahead and select that and hit the tab key so that um, we don't need these to be sub hatches but we want this to be a little more organic okay let's um, save that and let's synchronize layout go back over to layout and we've got our high-res object now I'm gonna go ahead and go to texture mode um, just to dress up this hose, let's go over to the surface editor and turn smoothing on. Okay, I'm going to take the um, the layer two, which is if I hit T for move, you can see it's our high res object. Control Z, M for motion options. I'm going to parent that to layer one. Okay, I'm going to go over to the properties panel for um, for layer two come over to deform and add displacement. I'm going to choose effects metal link. Now, if we wanted it to be a chain, uh, like a metal chain, then we could build the same two point poly chain, build um, the, uh, the metal chains, the metal links, and use hard link. And that would work and it wouldn't deform the chain. But in this case, we're doing a hose. So we'll use metal link. Okay. And let's see what happens. There we go. Let's. Um, it looks like it, it dropped the, the calculation when uh, when I did that. So I'm going to go ahead and recalculate. There we go. So whenever I synchronized layout, it um, we had it uh, we had to recalculate because it it dropped the the calculation. Okay. So it's staying connected at either end. Now it is a little too. Now I'm noticing it's a little. Uh, too crazy there. Let's see if we take our if we take our layer two 
and change our subdivision order to last. Okay, let's see how that looks. Okay, that looks much better. Okay, it's using fewer points, but it's still connected at the ends and it's colliding with the ground. And um, we can animate either side. We don't, we're not limited to this. We can animate this side as well. And so we can have full blown animation going on there. You can go as detailed as you want. That's one of the nice things about uh, Metalink. Uh, or even hard link is that your low res object could be super low res and your high res object can be incredibly high uh, resolution lots of polygons lots of detail and you can still link the motion from the low res to the high res so this is just a quick setup uh, that is going to allow you to animate a hose that it's connected on each end to an object and uh, and have it also collide with the ground and stay connected as you're moving and rotating it around